we want to mention this regarding body movements festival that happened in print work so um i didn't go but i just want to shout them out and just say it's amazing to see that they've been able to put together a very pretty successful festival which again it's a bit of a it's a bit of a cheat this whole festival day thing going on at the moment um essentially when i think of festivals i think of things that happen outdoors but now people are you know doing these day festivals quote unquote as a way to kind of get around doing longer nights for club nights because you know for club night it starts at some time in the evening you've only got a certain amount of time before you have to lock everything off because you know of our draconian laws around clubbing and nightlife and whatever alcohol consumption blah 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 so marketing it as a festival and have it start a bit early during the day is a good way to get around it so you can actually get in you know 10 plus hours of raving but you know it's still in a club in a venue place it just doesn't mean festival but anyway regardless body movements i still think is a good idea behind it you know particularly aimed towards the queer gay lgbtq whatever scene and i feel like now at the moment especially in london those guys are definitely the ones at the forefront of pushing culture and definitely providing some of the funnest parties out there in dance music for sure or in that life overall i think we look at stuff like budokai look at stuff like inferno look at stuff like howl look at obviously body movements festival there's obviously stuff like um adonis um homo tash body hammer um the one that the what you call it the guy charlie something does as well he's got a party also that he does at color factory on the sunday there's many of these kind of parties from that kind of scene and group of people that are doing that are really going amazing and you know they're obviously going from strength to strength the only issue i'd say for them would be that it feels like there always comes a point where these parties kind of i won't say sell out but they get too big because they become really popular and people start loving like myself you know i can't stop raving about those parties and talking about them and i'm not gay and i'm a normie i'd imagine from that kind of scene right i'd be ascribed as one well, especially if i'm not coming in dressed to the nines and really going for the club kid look so i'm kind of sticking out like a sore thumb but then when these normies keep coming there and having a good time it'll kind of spread the word it'll get out there similar to what happened to kind of um what's that thing called um horse meat disco and it felt like you know it comes to a point where it kind of you know it kind of becomes a little bit cliche it kind of becomes a bit lame and then maybe stop serving or servicing the people that you in initially try to service and represent because you know they are represented um, individuals in the scene and you want to provide something for them and it feels like there's always in the moment that kind of happens i hope it doesn't happen with body movement festival it feels like that's always happened so i wonder how they're going to handle that friction but i do like the idea of having something like body movement festival at one of the most commercial well-known venues in london even if it was just a quote unquote favor or something that they only managed to do because it's about to close down unfortunately right one of our most iconic interesting venues to look at even though i hate the sound and i think it's you know how they lay it out and the walking is annoying and the searching is annoying and everything i still think to look at visually it's an amazing place and it's a real shame that they can't just hold on to it long term and they're gonna tear it down and turn it into a flipping dull and banal flipping festival of glass and flipping metal with a shitty coffee shop that no one's going to go to and offices that are going to be occupied by the same dumb shit companies that are obviously all over liverpool street it's a shame that's going to happen but it is so maybe this was like a last minute favor to kind of just get them you know um part of the flipping gang or whatnot just to kind of offer something new because there's a free date there but i still love the fact that if i'm not mistaken the day before a body movers festival happened at printworks dead mouse was playing there Again, one of the most commercial well known DJs in the world was playing there, sold out, doing his thing. And then the next day you got all these amazing, you know, with all respect intended, freaks, weirdos, gays, queers, lesbians, whatever, all under the sun, LGBT come flooding in there and living their best life, showcasing themselves, presenting themselves in their best way. Like I think that kind of contrast is really amazing for me personally i think that's super super cool and if anything that should be what should be happening in most venues going forward in london but obviously you know we have our issues blah 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 so 
for them as a team, it's probably quite satisfying to go from throwing these quote unquote smaller festivals and now suddenly you're in one of the biggest venues in London and you've got all these people who are basically identified what you're doing, feel represented, feel seen, kind of partying and having a good time. That must be such a sick feeling, for sure, for sure. So big up them. I'm going to quickly clip, play a couple of clips here. I'm showing what they basically did. Obviously, you can see some images here from them, which look flipping amazing. We'll play this. Actually, this one video there with a the projection on Printworks there in the background. I just, you know what I wish? I just wish, in my opinion, I just wish Printworks sounded as good as it looks because it doesn't. It just doesn't sound as good as it looks. I think, because if, if you're used to going to these industrial type of places, the one that obviously comes to mind is Berghain. You initially think when you walk in or when you see it, oh, it's going to be like that. But when you walk in, it just doesn't sound the same. The sound is terrible, in my opinion. It kind of, unless you get to the front, if you're right at the back, it kind of sounds like equivalent to, you know, if you go to like a barbecue and somebody's got like some DJ or you go to someone's like house party and they've got a little DJ booth and they've got like some active monitor speakers at the front. Usually if you stand right next to the person playing or you're right at the front, the sound's amazing. The moment you go into the kitchen, it just sounds like someone's playing speak phones out of their flipping Bluetooth speaker. It doesn't really carry well and you know whatever maybe especially if you just got two that's what the film basically sounds like all the sound is right at the front doesn't necessarily spread around the whole venue and even though you'd imagine it's kind of well some soundproofed and insulated because it's a form of print work factory but whatever who cares um let's play this video this is uh the caption says as follows flooding print works london with queer joy for our winter edition today this will be the first and last body movers festival at print works and maybe the last time you'll be able to experience the iconic venue before it closes explore every corner and take up a space again this print works thing is all about closing man they they honey dicked me so much right i bought that flipping dixon ticket think it was a last event and then they've been able to confirm so many more events after the fact like when is it going to be the last event it feels like a sports direct thing closing down sale closing down soon last sale ever it's like either close or open but just do something but let's play the video <laughs> big up them that's the people involved in print works i'm uh, sorry um i'd imagine in body movies festival and let's see some other clips as well i think that features um lewis j yeah it is right is that lewis burton that lewis g burton i'm assuming <laughs> Yeah, it is, yeah, Lewis G. Burton from Inferno. Again, like I always keep saying, if you haven't been to Inferno before, please do. Definitely one of the more funner parties I've been to in London, for sure. Performances, club kids, vibes. Um, and the good thing I like about this whole, I like to deem it alternative nightlife scene. It probably is a, a, the most respectful thing to say, I'd imagine, but just a kind of way to kind of identify it from the usual things that go on out there, from the usual kind of quintessential tech house nights and whatnot. The reason why I like this really a lot also is the fact that programming wise, they tend to pick people within their own little community. So it's people that they feel like, you know, don't get the love that they need to get. People that are maybe just new, literally just started DJing the same year. And I feel like that kind of gives it a real community type of vibe. It's all kind of things that they're kind of feeding. And of course, sometimes they get guests and stuff, but for the most part, it's people that represent it or kind of stand behind what they do. And I really love that side of things. I think that really works really, really well. And um, it kind of adds a different sort of flavor to it. And obviously it's something fresh too, because when you go to the nights, you know you're not going to hear the same DJ that you heard at fucking Fabric, at fucking um, Night Tales or whatever else venue. It's going to be people specific for what they play. And obviously Louis J, um, sorry, Louis G Burton is one person also that does the same damn thing over there infernos absolutely shelling so let's play this clip of them playing <laughs> That must have been so much fun. Imagine how much fun that must have been. That must have been such a bloody vibe. And then we've got another video here to play. No, another clip. Oh, there's another video actually. Check the people walking and doing the damn thing, enjoying themselves. What's the caption say here? Scroll up. Um, we're back for our summer festival on July 29th. Make sure you RSVP, tell your friends. A moment for our incredible dancers keeping the energy going. <laughs>
so good, isn't it? To me, th- th- this is what made it fun, to be fair. Especially after being obsessed and, you know, um, bothered about all the burden stuff that I kept going to all the time and then coming back to London to be depressed of how boring and one note our scene was. Even though the diversity was really good, I feel like, you know, there wasn't enough club kids with enough of a vibe and obviously full popped up and that obviously serviced a good need. But I feel like this whole scene has kind of pushed and kind of pushed people out of their comfort zone and kind of pushed people to be more club kiddie looking wise, going out wise. People really make an effort with their outfits. They're coming something new, something fresh, never wearing the same outfit twice. Like it just feels like a good vibe. And even for someone like myself, who's like a normie. I'm just going to be standing there in all black wearing whatever I usually wear and in the corner just observing things. It's it's a real visual, it's a real like um, uh, sensory delight, right? When all your senses are kind of tickling, seeing all these amazing people you know, frolicking around the place, enjoying themselves, living their best lives, being all comfortable around each other in this quote-unquote safe space and just enjoying themselves. That's really, really cool to see, just visually. Even if you're not, you know, identify with anything that they're about, whatnot, just to see it as a club kid is really something cool to see, especially if you're used, like I said, like myself, to be sitting in a party where people just dress in all black and a bit boring. To see all that colour and vibrancy is really, 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 really cool. And I'm a big fan of it. And again, one last post here. Um, it says here, I guess from the founders of it, we'd like to thank the 5,000 plus queer and trans bodies that took over London's iconic print works on Saturday. A queer and trans music project being given the first Saturday of print works final season was a seminal moment for us and our community. On Saturday, we had a glimpse into what it would be like with our own little industrial playground. Queer and trans people deserve spaces and platforms like this. Our music deserves to echo through these hallways and our bodies deserve to dance on these floors. We want to thank everyone that helped us make this vision come true, especially the collective and the artists collaborated with it was a moment in history of the books let's make more history this summer love sir how you take how you pronounce her name sarosai someone told me sarosai sarosai i don't know please forgive me um clayton and simon body movements for your body your mind their body and the pictures of that's a good thing about print works right um picture wise it's very instagram ready like that flipping shot of the dj looking out on the crowd is amazing really really sick um just a shame they don't have these bits open at the top and at these kind of balcony bits i'm assuming there's probably a health and safety hazard but and again actually i think the last time i went actually i went to go i went to see a dixon event actually somebody got so lit that they jumped or they climbed up one of these speakers onto the top and started doing handstands and stuff like a bit nuts but yeah that crowd that looks like it's jammed that looks like it's way more packed than the event i went to with dixon the dixon event was a bit rammed at the front but towards the back it was kind of empty it looks like there was a lot of you know what's the thing queer and trans bodies in that space for sure so big up them more images of people in different i guess different rooms as well they're probably occupied vibes everywhere so yeah big up um body movements big up what they're doing what they represent i guess there's heron sue is there as well so doing a good heron sauna sorry they're doing a good thing so clearly it was a success and clearly it went off without a hitch and again, I think um, it's it's cool, man. It's good for London. We need this. We need a variety, um, a refresh. And the thing I like about it is with all these people, what they're doing, similar to what I said about the Nini H label, um, is that they're putting their money where their mouth is. Instead of waiting for handouts, instead of waiting for festivals to put diversity quotas and whatnot and nonsense in place to have people like them represented in places, they're just going out and making it themselves, which is great because, you know, what's going to eventually happen is that people are going to notice and you're going to see a body movements festival body movements festival stage at some big festival place at some big nightclub or something programming a certain whatever bit it might be like it will definitely happen in the future so definitely those things are on the card so i think just doing it yourself and putting your money where your mouth is definitely gets you further than waiting for handouts especially in this scene um, especially when you consider how slow people are to kind of adapt to what's going on and what's fresh and generally the industry as soon as you can prove that you can have there's a demand for it and you can sell tickets and you can fill venues suddenly the conversation about it changes anyway it doesn't really matter what you're about as long as you can sell venue and kind of fill it up people don't run up are really cool to kind of help you out and whatnot and sort of work with you in some way same perform so I'm eager to see how it goes on how it evolves how it develops and I'm also eager like I said before to see how to deal with the tension 
of having normies, having non-gays, non-queers, non-trans come in and sort of like, I won't say dilute it, but kind of muddy the waters and bring myself included, my normie, you know, regular guy vibe in there and how that's going to maybe disrupt or maybe enhance or help the situation going forward and how they kind of maintain the core of what they're doing and speak to the people who they originally were waiting to speak to. But we have to wait and see for that one. We will have to wait and see.